Welcome to this special edition on mental wellness during COVID-19. I'm Linda Hall, Director of the Office of Children's Mental Health. Our office's focus is on supporting Wisconsin's children in achieving their optimal social and emotional well-being. In this time of safer at home and social distancing, we wanted to know how the pandemic is affecting the work of our collective impact partners and their thoughts on how children's mental health might be affected in the long term. Today we're talking with our um, Mental Health Collective Impact uh, Council Executive Member, Monica Caldwell. Monica is Clinical Director of RISE in Madison, Wisconsin, and she's going to talk a little bit about her work. Well, hi, Linda. Thanks for having me. Um, RISE is uh, an organization that provides care and connection to people of all ages, races, ethnicities, abilities, and neighborhoods across Dane County. Our current enrollment is 694 families, and we offer services across the lifespan, beginning when a family is pregnant through adulthood. We serve both bilingual and bicultural families, and uh, we also serve those who are undocumented. That sounds great. Thanks, Monica. Well, tell us a little bit about how COVID-19 has changed what you're doing um, on a daily basis, and in what ways has it changed? Well, I feel like there are two big questions that we had to answer, you know, when COVID hit. And one was, what are the essential elements at RISE that we want to preserve? Our values, our history, our core competencies, our identity, who we are. And what is it that we have to shift in order to survive uh, uh, COVID? You know, what do we have to let go of um, in terms of uh, being able to adapt? So, of course, we've taken the necessary precautions to honor public safety and social distancing, and we have paused on all face-to-face -face meetings. Um, direct care staff are only seeing our participants via phone calls, emails, and virtual meetings. Um, most programs are up and running, though that wasn't easy at first. Um, we had to struggle around how we were going to adapt, wraparound services, CCS, all those other programs to the virtual environment. And it's it's, we're going to make a significant effort here to keep our, you know, nearly 600 and some families engaged um, in mental health services, parenting support, and early childhood services during this crisis. We've got some infrastructure for, you know, the conversion to telehealth, um, offering those services flexibly to people uh, in their homes. We found that some of our therapeutic services, um, the number of therapy sessions are actually up. So, you know, family members are participating, they're home together. And so family therapy provides some interesting complexity um, if you're gonna do it via the, via the camera, but we've got better attendance and more sessions, which has been a really lovely surprise. You know, one of the things that, we're, that I think makes us lucky is that we're a smaller nonprofit. We're able to pivot uh, pretty quickly. I'm not working in a state system right now or a bigger hospital setting where uh, there's more people that need to be included when you're adapting. So we feel pretty lucky about that. Um, we're also, uh, I encourage people right at the beginning um, to make sure that they're making a proactive contact to families every week. You know, not one of those situations where, hey, call me if you need me. We need to be reaching out via text, email, phone, virtual meetings in whatever ways that we can. And, you know, interestingly enough, at first my folks were like, well, our, our provider network is shut down. You know, we're not making referrals. How do we do wraparound? Like, what are our conversations about? And I said, well, just ask people how they are. You know, ask them about their stress. What's, what's happening for you? You know, how are you adapting to the environment? People want to be listened to, and this is a tough time for everybody. And so um, people are, are listening, but, you know, they kind of want to fix things. You know, they want to make a referral. They want to make it better. They want to address things. And, of course, we do that, but we are remembering that empathy and compassion are important as well. So, you know, we're connecting families to the school districts and distance learning and trying to figure that out, psychotherapy via telehealth. We're also doing tons in basic needs and crisis services, access to healthcare, essentially whatever the family is asking for. We also are addressing isolation and loneliness. We know how, how devastating it is when that's added to a mental health challenge. And for those people who don't have access to technology, we're making that kind of problem solving a priority. So we're also seeing families ask us about the new citywide food system, how to get rent assistance, how to file for unemployment. So we're seeing you know, requests across the board. We're doing our best to be as flexible as we can. 
Um, finally, what I would say in adaptation that has been really important for us is that our staff is also experiencing stress. And so they have uncertainty and lots of demands in their own families. Um, many of them are parents with small children at home trying to balance work and life. It's been really, really hard. And so we are uh, paying attention to that and we are offering additional individual and group supervision for our staff. Uh, we're making sure that our teams are convening more regularly so communication is flowing. And then finally, on Friday mornings, we're gathering as a whole staff, kind of opt in to learn together about things like fatigue and self-compassion and how our expectations and boundaries and work-life balance is different in the virtual setting and in COVID in particular. That sounds great, Monica. And I, it sounds like you've made some really um, important discoveries along the way and you've modified some things and you're making some really good um, inroads with families and having some new exciting things happening in therapy in, in the last couple of weeks. Um, great, great things to hear that we haven't heard from everyone else that we've been talking to. So kudos. Thank you. Um, so, so, and as you think about the things that you have put in place um, and what you've learned along the way, what do you think um, might be some lasting effects um, on the children's mental health system in terms of what we've learned along the way here during the pandemic? Well, I, I love the quote uh, that necessity is the mother of invention. Um, and what we've learned is that we can be flexible, um, that our traditional ways of doing business don't have to keep us stuck, and that we can actually, in fact, be more responsive. Um, I think that when um, within a, a week and a half to two weeks, we saw Medicaid shift to telehealth with the emergency rules, I was really struck by that level of responsiveness. And so we know that it'll change uh, when people come back together, but we now have a, a voice of advocacy here in terms of making sure that our services remain responsive, remain flexible. We know that childcare, transportation barriers, all those things interfere with participation in mental health services. Now with bringing services in a flexible way to families' living rooms when it's required, we know we can do this. So telehealth you know, basically has helped us challenge the old rules um, because now we know it's possible. So I'd love to see that continue, um, that virtual supports are available. Not that they replace person to person. This is not a black and white mm -hmm. construction of how change happens, but we can do both. We can be um, flexible and we can do it. You know, getting signatures, for example, we, we had to adapt very quickly to get electronic signatures so we could get informed consent and different permissions. We didn't think we could do it and we figured it out pretty quickly. So that's not going anywhere. That's, that's bound to stay. Um, I think the other thing that's really um, right, right on display right now are the health disparities, particularly for African-American families and undocumented individuals and families too. It's in sharp focus. And so that should absolutely influence how we deliver services and allocate resources into the future. Um, I also imagine working from home will allow flexibility for, for employers and employees um, moving forward. I realize we can work pretty hard um, even if we have to stay home, so flexible work arrangement might be more possible. Um, you know, a new normal is possible. It, it won't be easy, but we don't want to stay, have to, to stay attached to the old ways of doing business. Well, we really appreciate your taking time to share your experiences and your insights with us today. Um, for those of you who are listening to this uh, Zoom broadcast, we welcome your comments on this interview. And above all, we wish you and all your loved ones wellness during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thanks again, Monica. Yeah, thank you, Linda.